Hi, this is Shadi and today I'm gonna be doing a technical comparison between Kosei Inoue and Shohei Ono. Now, they are both three-time world champion and Olympic gold medalist. You have Ono uh, recently became a three-time world champion and Olympic gold medalist in Rio and you have Kosei Inoue the three-time world champion and the Olympic gold medalist in Sydney, Australia. We're gonna be looking at their Osoto Gari in particular, see how they set it up, um, whether it is used defensively or offensively, dominantly, etc. And who had the better uh, setup or the who outsmarted their opponent better. We're gonna be also looking at technique and speed. So first, we start with Shohei Ono. I would say Shohei Ono's Osoto Gari is pretty uh, straightforward. Um, he has a few tricks up his sleeve while doing it. First, he attacks um, either to the side, like perpendicular to his opponent. Here we see it, uh, kind of like an Ashiguruma, but he reaps away. Um, this will actually make it far harder for his opponent to resist while they are on their side being reaped, rather than just standing straight and being reaped to the back. So this is a cool trick that he does here. You can see he is perpendicular and almost his opponent cannot do anything about it. But here he has another one which is like a forward Osotogari. It's not to the side, but he keeps his uh, supporting leg backwards because in a case uh, he got overpowered by his opponent, he can always retreat and go back to his main position. I believe Neil Adams talked about his uh, back leg, keeping it in the back. Uh, just in case he has to defense, defend uh, against his opponent's strength. So Shohei Ono's Osotogari is pretty straightforward. There's no setup. The moment he has the armpit and lapel grip, he just hooks and starts reaping and pushes down with the lapel hand uh, as a Kuzushi, uh, kind of like what Keiji Suzuki said that the lapel hand should be pushing down in order to really execute a formidable throw and this is what we see here with Ono. So he has two Osotogaris um, either to the side like an Ashiguruma and straight forward with the leg back and defending and really applying his weight. So I would say it's pretty fast but not so much uh, like a chess game for him. However, if we go to Kosei in a way, in his younger years he used like a straight up Osotogari as we see here. Um, he twitches within Kosoto. Um, however, he has a lot of setups uh, to it. Kosei Inoue was actually uh, here, for example, he goes in for an Ochigari, and then when their opponent has their balance completely destroyed or on the other end of their body, he goes for the Ochigari. So he faints with a big Ochigari, committing to it 100% here against Takayama. Um, and then surprises them at the last second with an Osotogari. So um, this is the kind of setup that makes someone like in a way very special. We all talk about his Uchimata, etc. But he had uh, a technique for every scenario. Look how bigger and heavier Takayama is. And yet he was helpless to that Osotogari thanks to that Ouchigari drive and taking his balance and his weight all the way to the other end. Another feint or another tactic he used is uh, twitching with Kosoto here so they can lift their leg and they are only standing on one leg and then rips it away with Osotogari. Here we see it again. He lifts his leg and then immediately switches to Osotogari and drives down. So this is actually a very genius setup here against the Tunisian. Another look how high he lifts his leg up and then Twitches with Kosoto, boom! Look how what a reaction he got from that Kosoto twitch. So this is how genius Kosei in a way was. He actually had his opponent do like 70% of his work for him. Look how high he lifted that leg and how easy it was to just reap away with that Kosoto slash Ashiguruma. So in my opinion, uh, even though we recognize the genius of Kosei in a way, um, it is very important to go into the details and the intricacies of his techniques and his setups and truly appreciate 
how good he was. This is the only way to appreciate how good Jose Inoue uh, was. Um, I'm, I'm talking about him lately because I feel like I didn't talk about him enough because my judoka profile video was only like 15 minutes. I had to talk about his competition, the grip fighting and his techniques and his upbringing. So you cannot talk about everything in just one video. So I had to separate it into technical videos and also his um, human side in the video uh, in a way the samurai. So here you see his setups, um, how he truly played like a human chess game in judo. Uh, he almost had his opponent giving him the technique. If you see that second uh, Kosoto Osoto combination, it was just a matter of putting his leg in the right place, and that Osoto was just done for. However, Ono uh, just hooks and starts reaping and overpowers. And I think we have these two different uh, uh, Osoto Gari approaches. It's because Ono is. I, I'd like to believe that Ono is physically more powerful than every other judoka in the 73, except maybe Hashimoto, he is built strong just like him. However, in a way, in the minus 100 and the plus 100, he had to go through really heavy, strong giants. So I believe the setups like uh, Ochigari and Kosoto were very much needed far more than someone fighting in the 73 category so either way it's still um, far more elegant and far more a uh, genius than uh, Shohei Ono even though Shohei Ono has two Osotogaris with um, so much details in them they are still pretty straightforward and still using far more strength than he should or far more strength than he needs if he uses twitches like and feints like in a way I believe he will have far much easier time but being that he is like a bulldozer strong and also technical he developed his own style of judo very straightforward lightning fast and also just runs through his opponents while in a way uh, was almost like an artist in his uchimata and osotogari i hope you enjoyed this analysis um, if you have another uh, comparison you need me to do um, let me know down below